Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jesus, uh, Javier, and all the partners of the project to invite us uh, to talk about this study. Uh, first, I will do an uh, introduction about how it was, uh, how we started this project and uh, why we are doing it. Uh, first, uh, as uh, he said, we are uh, a public foundation that is in charge of promotion of science in our country. Uh, we have, um, uh, and we, let's say we, from the state, from the central administration, we coordinate programs of funding and we also do our own uh, outreach activities and educational activities. And we also coordinate with regional and uh, organizations and universities. So um, since this, um, uh, we, we had a call from uh, a, fund a foundation, which is the foundation of a bank, of a Catalan bank, it's called uh, Fundación La Caixa. Uh, and they were, uh, they have two science museums. This, they are kind of, um, let's say, uh, rare species in our uh, system because they have uh, a, a, um, a strong comment, uh, uh, a strong, uh, they're very, um, let's say, uh, how can I say, they are very uh, in, uh, involved in science education. They have two uh, science museums, one in Madrid and one in Barcelona, and they invest money uh, in science education. And they wanted to know the impact of the activities they do in the, in the museums and in the, in the schools. And we also have to do, uh, we also want to, to know uh, if this public money in our, in our case that we are investing and we're uh, uh, in direct actions or in other people uh, or institutions actions, which is the impact in terms of uh, number of students uh, deciding to uh, study science uh, careers, but not only uh, uh, not only uh, this uh, decision, but also the uh, uh, perception of science uh, as a whole, as as the citizens they will be in the in the future, and they will they will need a basic level of science. Uh, no let's no so um Everis was the is a co private company as you see this is a partnership between public non-profit and private uh, private company and actually they came for, to us because they have a need of uh, a skilled professional skilled professionals in the field in the field of IT and the field of consulting and they are a spanish uh, multinational company and they want they uh, they were asking themselves, okay, we want to invest money in science, promo in promo in promoting science education, but we exactly don't know which is the impact of these activities we you are doing. Can we uh, try to measure and assess this, uh, the impact of this activity? And that, that's the, the way it started this, pro the pro this project two years ago. We first did, uh, let's say, pilot, uh, let's say, um, uh, um, um, a small project to, with only uh, 400 students and, uh, and four schools in Madrid and Barcelona, trying to test, and uh, Roger will explain you later all the methodology of this study and what we would do it, but I will, what we have done, but we, I will uh, give you a small summary of, uh, of the main uh, objectives and the main, uh, and the main uh, methodological uh, content. Uh, f what we do is, trying to measure uh, in, um, in a students of secondary school, they have four, uh, 15 and 16, uh, 14 and 15 years, so, so they are at the beginning of the secondary school and they have to decide in the next year uh, which, are gonna, which, is, which is gonna be the last years of secondary school with, which will uh, determine if they are going to uh, science uh, careers or not. And uh, we, uh, what we do, what we did, what we did in the first project with less uh, amount of uh, students and schools, and in the second with uh, a, a large uh, amount of sample of a student sample and more schools, also in Madrid and Barcelona, is test in students that are doing activities of science uh, outreach, uh, science activities in science museums are and uh, in research centers try to measure if these activities have an impact in, the, in their decision to, to, um, to uh, continue studying science and, mat and, most impo and more important, know which other factors influence their decision 
in the uh, in, uh, influence this decision. No, so uh, this is a, like a whole uh, picture I give you. Uh, Rujé will in give you more data about uh, a, a more detail about uh, what we did. I only wanted to know. I only wanted to tell you uh, why we are here. Uh, well, you know that uh, the number of researchers in Spain is less. Uh, per mil, uh, per um, per thousand uh, workers is less than the average of European Union. So that is uh, so we need new scientists. Uh, we also n uh, think that this is the new the, the students are now in secondary school. We'll have to rebuild our productivity, our economic system that, uh, as you know, uh, we uh, faced a big, a big crisis and also. As I told you, uh, for instance, our public foundation spent last year three million euros in activities on science education, in non-formal and outreach activities in university research museums and other activities. So we also want to know if this investment has a revenue in terms of science careers. And okay, I don't have anything any more to say, anything to, more to say, and I will give the uh, the word to uh, Ruje, that uh, Ruje Burras, who. who uh, give you more detail. Okay, Thanks. thank you very much, Gonzalo, for the introduction. As uh, said, I represent Everis. It's a consultancy firm um, specialized in technology services, and within our corporate social responsibility, we've been working on the lack of STEM vocations. That's uh, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics since 2007. We've done several uh, studies on the matter, and this one is the last one of them. First of all, first of all I, I would like to thank uh, LOER Foundation for inviting us and giving us the opportunity to present this project. Although uh, our conclusions and results are not done yet, we are on it. We hope to have them at the end of this month. Um, all in all, we'll show you what we're expecting to achieve, and I hope that all will be it. Okay, the impact of outreach activities in science careers decisions at secondary school, that's the, uh, our project, it's been quite ambitious from the very beginning. We did this first pilot testing, and in the second phase, which has, I think, been for a year now, uh, wanted, well, aimed at very specific objectives that didn't have a uh, easy answer. Our question of our study is, as Gonzalo said, if STEM outreach activities have an impact on uh, students' vocations for science. Okay. When talking about vocation, we have to take in consideration what's, what, do you, what do we understand for it. We could uh, think of some professions or careers which are said to be vocational. For example, doctors, nurses, teachers. But what do we mean exactly by that? In our opinion, we might be thinking of some kind of inclination or predisposition to a particular calling or career. In this sense, vocation means a decisional process to us. A decisional process that measures over time from the very beginning, the very early childhood, to some critical choices taken in the late years of secondary schooling. In our case, in Spain, it is at the end of the fourth term of secondary schooling when students are called to take their first formal vocational choice. And what is that? What's a vocational choice for us? That's the choice between continuing studying or not the choice between the, pa the paths of occupational formation or college, and also the choice between STEM, social sciences, humanities, or arts. And that's quite, that's quite a choice. By the way, we haven't talked yet about what we understand by impact. Impact is to us the effects, the influence something has on other things. STEM outreach activities must have, are supposed to have an impact on vocational choice, and that's what we are studying. We assume that students must have some kind of inclination to choose STEM or do not. This inclination, these chances to choose STEM, 
may well depend on the inputs intervening in the, in the decisional process. Here we can see an illustration of uh, a decisional process across time and several inputs affecting the inclination of these students to choose or not choosing STEM. Otherwise, if we, if we thought that this, uh, this process didn't have inputs or was changing over time, the choosing of a career would mean that we flip a coin and we choose science or we do not regardless of what happened to our life, what interests we have, or the parents we had. That's why we selected this image to show you how we understand this evolution of the inclination. We got to this point to our first challenge, and that was the defining the whole set of potential influencing elements, these inputs that we see that influence the vocational choice. Two years ago, we carried out a study with 5,000 students that gave us some keys to identify what thought students that was influencing them when taking their decision. In addition to that, we searched scientific papers for factors that were supposed to influence the vocational choices, and we found a few. Actually, we consulted the CRITHIM, a specialized research group dedicated to promoting a better STEM literacy through the analysis of, of the teaching and dissemination of science. Thanks to their support, we completed a whole set of 32 potential decision elements that might influence the vocational choice of students. Here's the complete set of potential decision elements that we have identified. Please note that this does not mean that every one of these factors in here will have an impact to, for everybody or at the same level, okay? These are uh, inputs that uh, appear in literature as possible uh, on influencing this choice. Our statistical analysis will take care of sorting out which factors do really impact and which not. As you may see, we have grouped our decision elements in four conceptual groupings, and that is the student's features, that means interest of the student, STEM achievement expectations, autofficacy, and science. We had the second group was educative environment, and that includes the academic performance, both general and specific for STEM uh, activities. Uh, the, uh, if they have any references, STEM reference, references within the teachers, or the influence some teachers may have on them at the, that they can admit. Our third grouping was the social environment, and that means the STEM professions, perceived prestige, lifestyle, or reachable socioeconomical level. And last but not least, the close environment, also called family. That includes also friends and not that close family. And here we have some examples like uh, economical and sociocultural status of the family, uh, if they have a close reference at home in STEM. We'll go into detail with family. Family. Family has several inputs in, in its grouping, and we have selected three of them that we want to refer here as an example. STEM reference at home, as said, can come from parents, brothers, sisters, and that could be from working parents or sisters and brothers, perhaps working or studying, in something related to science. The second one is the parental influence on the choice. Admit it, what does admit it mean? We are asking them to admit that their parents have an influence on their choice. That's not the same level of question. Um, and the last one that we chose is the culture and socioeconomic status, which is a classical indicator in these matters. We, for this case, we chose a, a very close approach to PISA Studium to determine this factor. Well, now that we have defined our theoretical framework and how we identified our inputs, 
it's time to design our experiment. We will need to gather data to fit our model. We made out an initial sample of more than 2,000 students coming from 36 different schools in Barcelona and Madrid. These schools were randomly selected respecting two criteria. First one was the socioeconomic level of the district where, the, where these schools were. This was the, our closest approach to having a representative sample of students of different socioeconomic levels. And the second one is the ownership of the school. That means that they're funded public, private, or the, the, the ownership is private but public funded. That's a com very common um, case in Spain. We think that with this, uh, respecting these two criteria, our sample was representative enough of the schools of Madrid and Barcelona in order to carry out our study. We split our sample into two groups. The so-called treatment group, consisting of more than 1,000 students, participating in the two types of STEM outreach activities that Gonzalo mentioned. Science workshop in Cosmo Caixa and this proximity talks with scientists organized by Tfecit. At the same time, the treatment students would be filling three questionnaires specially adapted for our study. One before the science workshop, one between the two activities, and the last one a, a couple or three weeks before they took the formal decision. In addition to this group, we defined, well, this is two examples of the activities, okay? In addition to the first group, we define a second group formed of a thousand students that didn't take part in these activities. They completed the three questionnaires as well with the same questions but without taking part in it. Our aim was to compare differences, if any, in the tendencies to choose STEM career between the two groups, the ones ta taking part in the specific outreach activities and the ones that did not. The data gathered in these questionnaires is what we are using right now to say as impact of STEM activities. Through statistical regression techniques, we are looking for differences in the STEM choosing propensity be between the two groups. But measuring the impact of outreach activities has become a little more complex than we thought initially. Evidence shows that reality is more complex. What if our inputs, let's say, interest in STEM subjects do not only influence the choice directly. What if this also may influence the academic performance? It's quite feasible to think that students' interests have an impact on school grades. If I have interest in a, one subject, it's probable that my school grades can be different. But if I have good grades in, in a determinate uh, subject, it may also foster my interest in that. And that's when we come to this model where inputs do not only influence the vocational choice, but do the, they are influenced altogether. In order to isolate these possible relationships between the inputs, further, further analysis will be required, which is not in the scope of our project. All in all, our, our objective, which was identifying those factors that do influence the vocational choices, it's still possible. Thanks to a regression model, we'll have the chance to do it. These factors will be such as family, STEM teachers, students' self-perception of their own capabilities, the whole set of social inputs, or even more. Please note that this, that this is an illustrative example of what we want to achieve. This is, this is not the result. Okay. Once we know which factors play a role in this choice, our objective will be to establish if STEM outreach activities do have an influence in the vocational choice of secondary students. And here's an, one of our own known uh, inputs that are, that are these STEM outreach activities. Right now, we are working on the data obtained during the past school year, and we expect to have our first results at the end of this month. More precisely, the expected outputs from our work will be, thank you. 
achieving a characterization of students that uh, based on the willingness to study STEM. That means that our regression model will end up with an equation uh, capable of measuring students' propensity or tendency for choosing STEM. That will not be uh, the final equation of uh, foreseeing what a person will choose or not, but it's another tool to see what uh, students' propensity in choosing STEM basing on all the inputs that we have seen. The second uh, output is being capable of assessing impact of any STEM outreach activities in the future, following the same model with questionnaires before in the mid or perhaps only in before and at the end, seeing if there's variations in their interest or uh, propensity to choose STEM. And last but not least, Assessing the impact of the STEM outreach activities analyzed in, uh, in this study. That means the outreach activities organized by Cosmo Caixa and La Obra Social and uh, FECIT. We trust this project, which has been our journey for the past two years, will shed light on the impact of outreach activities on STEM vocations as well as on the other factors conforming the vocational choice of students. The outputs of the project are aimed to redesign outreach activities in order to be more effective. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, time for questions. Joshua. Uh, thank you. It was a great presentation. I have a couple of questions. One is, uh, this study will be public, uh, the report at the end of the project. Do you expect to have it published? Yeah? Okay. Uh, and where? where? <laughs> and the second <laughs> question is, uh, will you focus on the gender issues? Because we are during all the day, we are asking the same question about gender. Okay, what about the gender issue? Will you focus on it as well, or? Our study, to Our study will aim to uh, compare differences not only between the two groups as well. We expect to uh, look for differences between uh, the gender difference and between other aspects like uh, that we can categorize as a two or three or four categories uh, clearly differentiated. To your question, yes, we're uh, taking that into consideration because our peer um, studies showed us that there was evidence that someone was go um, something was going on uh, between the two genders. Uh, and we've already seen, we, I think we can say that, that uh, there's a difference in the self-perception and the capability of females and males when talking about a science career. But, well, I think in our final study, we will dedicate a specific uh, chapter on it, so you may see it there. Yeah, uh, um, we will publish it, but our intention is first uh, try to publish a scientific paper of that, about that to the scientific community to use this data in further investigations, okay? Because we, what we saw when, when we start the project is that is little, little has been done in, a little has been done in terms of try to measure or assess the impact in STEM outreach activities. Uh, museums are working on that, but very uh, focused on their activities and most of the times are uh, for general public in terms of, uh, not, on, not for the uh, students that are in secondary school. So our intention is to publish it, uh, as, I said, as I told you, in, in scientific, uh, in a science uh, paper, uh, mm -hmm. and that we will try. Um, I will also stress out uh, several questions. Uh, we did it in Madrid and Barcelona. First, uh, first, because we are based in Madrid and Barcelona, and it was easier for us, and we have the museums of science uh, of Como Caixa in Madrid and Barcelona, and that was easier for us. But we, as Ruya said, but I wanted to stress it out, uh, is, uh, we, is that we select the, the schools uh, depending on the, of the social status. So, and Madrid and Barcelona are very diverse, so we can, we can say that uh, at least it's representing 
probably not the real areas of, of Spain, but we maybe it's, uh, we we uh, think it's representative of the at least uh, urban uh, areas of Spain. Okay, so that that could be. Uh, I'm furthermore, and um, in our intention as Pali Foundation is use this method to assess our activities, okay? So as I, t I said yesterday, and in Barcelona we were presenting the study as well, uh, our intention is uh, this money we invest in, in, the, in, the, in the study, uh, try to uh, get out revenue from that, using this method in assess our own activities and the activities we fund. I, want, I, want, I only give it, wanted to give you a data. This three million of, of euros we spent last year, uh, it, uh, uh, this, it, I mean, it's, um, it was spent in more than 200 activities and directly um, our activities uh, directly uh, were involved for 40,000 uh, 40, students and the whole activities, for instance, Science First, we found like uh, Luyar Science Fair or other, we found more than more than uh, 12, uh, I mean 12 science fairs last year. Uh, uh, there were two, uh, two, um, 250,000 students involved. So we want this method to be tested in this sample of, big sample of students we, uh, we approach and we, we get we, every year, okay. No question here, Kieran. Uh, thanks very much for your presentation. Um, there's obviously a connection in terms of the area of study that you're looking at and, mm -hmm. and for example, what Stimula has looked at. So I have, I have a couple of observations and then a couple of questions. Um, I mean, if you, th if you think of Stimula as, as a, a multiple case study or whatever way you want to think of it, okay, uh, we're not going to be able to generalize so because we can't. Mm -hmm. But um, certainly it would be interesting to compare what you find as against you know, what we have found. Mm -hmm. But can I ask, um, first of all, um, in terms of your questionnaires, um, uh, w were they sort of the liquor scale uh, type questionnaires, the, ones, the type of ones that we mm -hmm. used? That, that's the first question. And, and then your, in terms of your analysis, um, are you using SPSS? Is that how you're analyzing? Uh, that was my second question. And my third question then was about, in terms of the STEM outreach impact, um, did you, or is it your intention in the future to actually assess the impact of the type of STEM outreach activities, if you understand what I mean, as opposed to the activities themselves, as to what, how the pupils determine what impact that's having? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the last question, we try to, uh, I mean, we select the, the two activities that I did not explain uh, in detail, what, what were, which were, uh, were the typical activities the universities and research centers and museums that uh, do. Uh, like uh, the museum activity was a visit to the museum and, and uh, a, a small uh, practical um, workshop uh, with uh, experiments, okay? And the second activity that was funded by us was a teach a researcher uh, professor going to the classroom to talk the, to them about uh, the scientific career and about the uh, topic of uh, research. So it was like model, model, uh, model, model role uh, type of activity. You know? So we select these because are the main activities that normally uh, universities and research centers da do. But uh, of course, uh, we were planning to, uh, to uh, open this uh, method of uh, access uh, to other kind of activities and try to compare the impact of different activities in the uh, in the uh, in the well using the same model. Okay. Okay. And then to the questions about more about the questionnaires about software. Yes, we're using SPSS. And excuse me, I'm used to the Spanish <laughs> spelling. And uh, we used both Likert. Uh, zero to ten, and yes, no answers, depending on the type of formulation and the basis of our, where we took this question or uh, the intention we had. We've seen that what, when talking about grades, asking grades to the people, it was easier to ask go to ten, 
what's your grid. And when talking about more sensible issues that may tend to give us a central answer, we gave the f four uh, options, usually Likert, so they, they couldn't <laughs> answer the number five straight ahead. And an important thing, uh, this uh, for the practical use of this method, uh, w what we can do is now with this, uh, we expect to to have this uh, method methodology uh, to to do the same, the, the following. Uh, if we imagine you have a, a sample of students, you, a museum wants to work this year, okay? So with this with with this uh, uh, methodology, with this uh, questionnaire, you can test at the beginning before starting, which is the propensity of uh, study uh, science and technology, and then you can all you can uh, um, design the activity. In depending the the, uh, the the factors you have seen in this population, in this sample, uh, or which is when you should focus. Maybe they have a problems. They have problems with educational uh, uh, auto self perception, or maybe they um, they you have a you already have a very motivated uh, sample. So maybe you you have to design a more uh, highest level uh, higher level activity, or maybe you have. Uh, people um, um, sample that are very, very uh, low motivated and have social problems, blah, blah, blah. So then, then can give you also answers before uh, designed activities. And you can afterwards measure if this activity has an impact on, on this population. That's what we want. Thank you, okay. Thank you very much, Rodney and, and Gonzalo.